drive. Here's the Dodge we plan to take on our trip. It's a 1918 Dodge touring car. I bought it a couple years ago at an auction and uh, I didn't do anything with it. I just kind of left it around, sitting around, as you can see, and uh, this is the way it is. So a couple interesting things about it. The windshield here, I guess years ago, they got in an accident or something and broke the windshield, but they repaired it by drilling some holes, putting some bolts through it, some little screws through it. I always thought that was kind of cool. So inside the engine compartment, it's uh, pretty dismal. Something's been living in there and it's been taken apart. I have all the pieces. They gave me a box of parts and nuts and bolts when I picked it up. We'll have to see what all is there and what all is not there and if all the pieces go to this car because there was a lot of cars at that auction and I'm not sure we have all the right pieces. The sheet metal is in pretty rough shape. At least the fenders. The fenders are really bad. The rest of the car is not too bad. I think the body is going to be okay. There's one spot I'll show you a little later that has some rust on it. So when I picked it up it wouldn't roll due to the fact back here the uh, leaf spring is off and uh, so what's happening is the tire is rubbing on the fender and it does so it doesn't roll but I have found a leaf spring for it and uh, we'll put it on there and that should take care of it it's kinda of sitting down on its side there and we'll get that fixed uh, the other side here looks alright it's missing the gas tank right there but that's okay because I want to replace that the fenders again they're in bad shape and uh, the reason well I don't really know exactly why those are in such bad shape but a lot of the other sheet metal is uh, due to the fact that when I picked it up they only had a forklift to load it and so all of this damage here came from the forklift it uh, wasn't quite this bad but now it is <laughs> so we're gonna have to fix that probably not too much fixing we're probably just gonna have to make some new stuff or find some stuff on eBay to replace it because it's really really rough the dash is all there the steering wheel you know it has some really weird rust on it it's big flakes all over you can see it right here big flaky rust and it's all over even on the nickel plating it's it's odd. I don't know why, where they had it or what they were doing with it, but it must have been sitting in some moist area. The uh, the engine up here, same, just the other side of the engine, uh, still missing a lot of pieces, uh, nuts and bolts. That's the starter generator right there. We'll have to take that apart and see what's going on in there. I'm not sure why they had it apart, but usually when it's that far apart it's not a good not a good sign so we'll have to figure that out uh, this is just pretty much at the auction house they put anything and everything that looked like it went to the car inside the car so this is I don't know if it's everything that goes to this car or if we have extra parts or not enough parts but there is a lot of stuff back here and I like I said I just dropped it off I didn't pay much attention uh, it just looks so neat on uh, the auction website that I went for it. And uh, sometimes that's not a good thing. I may have got myself into some trouble here. But but it's something I can do and we'll get it put back together and we're going to take it on a ride. Um, if you look here, there's some rust, but it's it's not bad. I, you know, Most of that that just fell off there was dirt. But most of it is pretty good. Um, on the other side right about this area there's some stuff that's uh, pretty rusted through but I think we can patch that without too much trouble again uh, this sheet metal back here on these fenders I think it's it's done it's history we're not gonna be able to fix those uh, it does have a spare tire rack on it and like I said the gas tank is gone but uh, I wouldn't even attempt to take an old gas tank across the country I would Put a new one in there because I don't like all that flaky rust getting into my carburetor. Um, some of the upholstery is left here and right here this is where it's rusted through. You can see a couple holes there so we'll just have to make a patch panel and uh, fix that up. 
And right here, this, uh, this is evidence of the removal of the leaf spring. So I guess they didn't feel like taking off any of the sheet metal. They just cut a hole in it and bent it aside to get the bolt out. So it's another thing we're going to have to fix. Actually, that probably was the best looking sheet metal piece on the car. The windshield here, not too bad. It's kind of uh, rusty down here. But uh, we'll put some Bondo in there and see what it looks like. And uh, if it doesn't look good, we'll try and find a new one. Here's the speedometer. It says it goes 60 miles an hour, but I highly doubt that it goes 60 miles an hour or ever did. Uh, unless maybe it was just on the trailer on my way back here. The uh, hubcaps, they're in pretty good shape. There's three out of four here. And the wheels, well, I'm just not sure about the wheels. They might work. They may not work. I need to get all the paint off of them and clean them up and see what kind of condition the wood's in before I make that determination. Under here, you can see someone's taken the kingpin out and just put a, a long bolt in there. So I'm not sure what that was about. Uh, so I am missing the kingpin and also the one behind it that holds the tie rod on. Hopefully they didn't cross thread those in there because that big square bolt looks like it has coarse threads on it. I'm 100% sure that that leaf spring or that uh, spindle there has really fine thread on it. So the fender here, this is pretty rough. Uh, hopefully I can find some because making one with that crown right there in it is going to be really hard to do. And I really don't, uh, I'm not sure I could make those on my own. So the kingpin on this side looks like it's the original, and uh, it's missing the little oil grease cup on it, but we'll figure that out. That's not too big of a deal. If you look down here at that little thing that looks like a ball, like a ball with on a rod, there's something missing there. There's, there should be like a, a rod that goes up to the steering box. I'm not sure it's in with all my parts, but we'll find out. The radiator here. My plan with the radiator is just to replace it with a modern core so that we don't have any problems going across the desert. Uh, it's just not worth it to try and limp it through. I mean this one, who knows, it could be maybe repaired but I don't want to chance it so we're just going to put a new one in there. So back down in here, I'm going to look, yeah, see that little square thing right there between the rust? That is where the there should be an arm there that hooks to that front end spindle. And uh, that's missing as well. So I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do there. Maybe I can find it. Maybe I can ask some buddies of mine if they've got one. I'm not sure. Down here, the whole front of the engine is apart. I'm not sure if this engine was out at one time. And now it's not. Uh, they put it back in to sell it. I don't know. But uh, I have all the front pieces to this. But why it was apart, I don't know, and that's uh, that's a big question mark. That could uh, that could mean bad things. I don't know if it's seized up. I haven't tried to turn it over and see. Um, it doesn't look like they took the engine out. I mean, everything looks to be pretty much there. It looks like they disassembled it right in the car. So we have the uh, Dodge Brothers emblem, and the radiator cap is actually still here. That's usually gone, long gone. On uh, every car that I've ever bought, the radiator cap is always gone. So it seems to be working all right. It has good threads on it. It looks fairly clean down there, but regardless, uh, I'm going to put a new core in that radiator just to make sure, just for, just for safety's sake. I'd hate to get out in the middle of nowhere and have to deal with an overheating car. I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of other issues to deal with, and I don't want to have that one. Still got the auction number on the uh, headlamp here and some cool rims. I like the headlamp rims on them. And uh, this car has electric lamps, which will be nice. Uh, I have another car and it's got carbide lamps that uh, burn acetylene gas. So flipping a switch is going to be really neat, really easy, which uh, I, I like the idea. I mean, I, I wasn't sure what to do with this car when I first bought it. I just bought it and now uh, I came home one day and said to my family how about we put this car together and take it 
down Route 66, and they all kind of laughed at me. And uh, they still are kind of laughing at me. <laughs> Anyways, this is an another shot. Here's one of the leaf springs that I picked up. I bought it from a guy who has a car very similar to this, but uh, he was turning it into a hot rod. So I bought them off of him, and I, I tried to buy the fenders, but he wanted to keep the fenders. Uh, I don't know, maybe someday, you know, throughout the restoration, he'll change his mind. I mean, hot rods with fenders are cool, but hot rods without fenders are just as cool. And maybe he'll decide to help us out and sell us those fenders. Here's the uh, what's left of the upholstery here. Got the, It's really hard and brittle. That's part of the top. It was up when I bought the car, but uh, I had to put it down to take it, take it home, so it fell apart. And this has the original... It looks like leather with horse hair and burlap backing on it. I'm surprised this was leather. I, I thought maybe it would have been something else this, this late into production, 1918. I figure it would be some kind of some kind of other material, less expensive than leather. But it is. It's leather and uh, cool. So this is the car. Um, this is what we're planning on doing. We're going to take it all apart. We're going to fix all the rust. You know, this rust here is not too bad. It's uh, it's pitted, but it's not gone through yet. And uh, we're going to take the body off. We're going to rebuild the engine, the transmission, the rear end. Um, we're going to fix the front end. Uh, get everything working the way it's supposed to work. We're going to put a new radiator. We're going to probably we're going to paint it to look kind of old. I don't really want it real shiny. I want it to show a little bit of age. So we're going to have to come up with an idea of how to paint it to protect it and still make it look old. Make it have some uh, some areas that maybe it's uh, looks like it's fading through. And uh, I just don't want it to look brand new. I don't want it to be all shiny. Uh, I've done that. I have a car like that now. And every time that I look at it, I, you know, I get worried that it's going to get scratched. So I want something... You know, when we take it across, across the country, it doesn't matter if it gets scratched. It's not going to hurt it. It's not going to make a big difference. But uh, here's the car. It's going to be a long process. If you want to if you want to hang out and watch the whole thing, just uh, subscribe to our channel. Rolling History is our channel. And uh, it's going to be a fun trip. And so subscribe.